stay the same, right? Because um, if it goes lower, then it means people are dying, right? Um, um, and, and, and so this is, this is sort of a sad thing about, about the epidemic, is you kind of want the numbers to, 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 to stay the same. Um, so here's a map uh, of, the, of the province uh, in Kenya and four districts in which I focus my field work. Um, so I selected the districts because I wanted some geographic diversity, so north, central, and south. And it also provides an example of a province with macroeconomic elements common to other parts of Africa which are affected by HIV. It's a labor migrating province uh, situated along major trading routes, including a trans-African highway, uh, a port city with routes to Uganda and Tanzania by water. So it's a very sort of busy and dynamic um, area. Uh, so in my search for mechanisms, this appeared an ideal place to yield insights that may shed light on issues affecting young people in other parts of Africa. So um, I'm now going to turn to my findings. Um, and I'll talk about the paradox of wealth, education, and employment before offering some conclusions. So first, paradox of wealth, or the entanglement of love and money. So uh, the table that you're looking at um, shows the HIV prevalence rates among Luo youth. Um, <coughs> Um, so it sort of shows you the rates for men and women from ages 15 to age, age 34. Um, and so what you'll notice uh, is that some partners are more dangerous than others. Okay? So I often say numbers tell a story, and this is why I like to start with producing uh, statistical trends. Uh, and so when I look at something like this, I'm thinking, you know, what's the story that the numbers are, are, are telling me? Okay? Uh, and so what is you know, almost immediately clear is that if a 15 to 19 year old girl only had relationships with guys her same age, she'd be at very little risk for getting HIV. Okay, and if I showed you a similar graph for the 20, uh, 2004 survey, 0% of teenage boys had HIV. Okay, so generally speaking, same age uh, boys were low risk or no risk. Right? But every subsequently older partner that a girl had carried substantially more risk, right? So if she dated a guy 15 years older, she'd be at really high risk, right? And if you're sort of thinking of Russian roulette when it comes to relationships, right? Your stakes are a lot higher with an older partner, okay? Now, while these rates are certainly high, what I note in the book, um, I did work with a gra former graduate student of mine called Bethany Everett using ad health data, which is a study in the US uh, of teenagers and, and, and young adults now. Uh, and we found that about 39% of women, 16% of men in the US, have ever had a sexually transmitted infection by age 29. Okay, so 39% of women, 16% of men. Okay, so the numbers are not that different, right, from what you're seeing here. The main difference is the primary STI, sexually transmitted infection in circulation in this setting is incurable and fatal, right? Um, so young, I, I, I should also note, right, that when um, you sort of think about things like sexual networks or risk environments, we're often not aware of the risk environment that we're in. Okay, so young people were not aware that this was a risk environment that, that they were in, and that was what became immediately clear in the course of field work. But I wanted to understand in my qualitative work what are the relationship dynamics and logic that are producing these numbers? And in particular, why were young women selecting older partners? And what was keeping young men under the age of 25 safe? So why then do young women pick older partners? Um, so the first reason, um, from a, a school girl called Maureen, um, I'll read what she said. Mostly people choose sugar daddies because the boyfriends, you know, they give people more stress. They'll be watching your every move. With them, they'll always be near where you are, even in the estate. They'll be seeing you, but sugar daddies, daytime, they're at work. But boys, daytime, they'll be at home. If you attempt to talk to another boy or make a relationship with another boy, he'll see you and the fight will start. The sugar daddy will only see you at night or weekends or in the clubs. So this was especially significant for schoolgirls who felt that older partners were much more compatible with pursuing education 
and they were less emotionally involving than same age boyfriends. So they felt that boyfriends got uh, same age boyfriends got jealous really quickly, uh, and liked to fight with boys that they thought were sort of trying to, to compete with them for their for their girl. Um, another reason why uh, girls would say that they picked older partners was sexual experience. So as Anne noted, a young man can jump on you eight times in the night and you're not satisfied. An old man can jump on you once and you'll even be satisfied for a month. <laughs> so basically, older guys are better in bed. Same age guys are still trying to figure out where all the parts go. <laughs> Which makes sense, right? <laughs> it's logical. Um, <laughs> so there's no missing discourse of design in, in this setting. <laughs> but a, a, a predominant reason that, that kept coming up in interviews for why young women picked all their partners was to gain access to money and gifts. And so um, in, this, in the statement I'll, I'll show you in a bit by Jacqueline during a focus group interview, she was frank about the challenges of being a schoolgirl who wanted to look fashionable despite economic limitations in the family, as well as what she saw as an obvious solution. So this is what Jacqueline said. You know if you're a schoolgirl, it's very hard to get money unless you're given by your parent. So let's say there's a very nice trouser you want to buy, so that's pants. Um, and you cannot ask your father or mother for money. Now, we'll force you to look for a boyfriend whose pa parents are a bit rich, so that if you beg for something like a thousand shillings, he can easily give you, so you can go and buy that trouser that you're really in need of. But if, let's say, you're working in somebody's house, we'll force you to scrub that house every morning, but at the end of the month, you only earn a hundred shillings. So if you have a boyfriend, you can earn it very easily, because you only go there, do it once, and then he gives you. So this statement is interesting for a number of reasons, and I'll focus on, on just a few. Okay? First, this is not commercial sex. For Jacqueline's boyfriend, parting with $14, a lot, even for someone rich, suggests that he views her with a measure of affection and offers the money as an elaborate gift. If he wanted to buy commercial sex, he could do so for a fraction of the cost. So it's a gift that makes economic sense of her actions, a rich boyfriend versus a month of work, and makes her actions culturally intelligible to the focus group of peers among whom she spoke. So cost-benefit analysis was clearly at work. Having sex with a boyfriend who's willing to give you money is easier than trying to earn it through difficult work for very little money. And certainly measuring a wage of 100 shillings after a month of scrubbing someone's floor compared to sex with a rich boyfriend who gives a gift of 1,000 shillings is little contest. In fact, the girl who chooses to scrub floors, a job that doesn't require high school education, would be looked down on more than the one who chooses a quick fling and is able to show off a new pair of trousers and a generous boyfriend to her friends. So um, Jackson's statement would be familiar to many Africanist scholars of young adulthood across the continent who have documented the presence and integral role of money in them. Now, these transactional relationships are neither commercial nor about survival. Most girls profiled a school, college going. School is not free in, in, in many settings. So they come from families where there's a basic provision of food, shelter, and clothing. Um, and in fact, in a, a representative survey done in Kisumu, the capital city of Nyanza, um, Nancy Luke uh, found that um, 72% of men gave almost 10% of their monthly income to their adult friends. Non-commercial, non-marital partners. And that's a lot of money, <laughs> if you think about it. Um, and, and she was actually able to quantify it. But it does suggest that men's generous provision to girlfriends is the norm, right? This is what girls expect. And this is men reporting, it's not even women reporting. So provision was typically in the form of cash, right? So this is something that would be unusual. Right, so uh, here I guess it'd be a gift card <laughs> to Macy's or something, right? Cash, meals, drinks, uh, gifts, transportation, and even rent support. Uh, so it's a very sort of explicit kind of you know, provision. There's no attempt to sort of mask um, the fact that it's, it's, it's a money transfer. So provision is significant not just because men often made more money than women, 
but because it's a primary way in which men demonstrated love, care, and concern. So this system, however, meant that many young men simply could not afford to show love. So many young men would, you know, would lament to me, no money, no room for you. Right? Um, so Mills and Sarah Kiryanga did a study of Ugandan college men, and they said, no romance without finance. <laughs> so it's expensive to date, right? You need, you need money. Ironically, however, this relationship logic is what kept many young men safe because they couldn't afford to sustain long-term relationships with young women. Many I interviewed were involuntarily abstinent or they only had what they called hit and run. Sex, so that the one night stand was called a hit and run. Um, sex in, in what they called bush hotels, right? And so um, uh, along the village paths, right, there are lots of bushes and so they sort of have sex behind the bush. So that was the bush hotel or the green hotel. <laughs> so this is how, how the, how the um, right here it's the car, right? <laughs> back seat of the car, right? You sort of find what you, do what you have to do. Um, <laughs> so the probability of getting HIV each time you have sex is about one in a thousand, right? So this is why the long-term relationships are the risky relationships, not the one-night stand relationships. So it's repeated exposure to the HIV virus in which the greatest risk lies, and that happens in long, longer-term relationships. So this is why, for many Africans, marriage is the biggest risk factor for HIV AIDS. Now, once young men got jobs and started accumulating resources, they could afford one or more girlfriends. So this explains that what I saw when I went back to the survey was young men's rates started to rise as they got older. And I was trying to figure out why, does, why is there this sort of steady increase? And it's connected to... Um, um, accumulation of resources and therefore being able to afford to have um, relationships. But all this begged a larger question for me. Why do girls want money? Not just here, but in accounts of transactional relationships across the continent. Um, and so what I noticed in examining historical accounts of the Lua was that ideals of beauty had become increasingly commodified over the 20th century. And this shift was fueled by the large proportion of men who migrated out of the province for work and returned with new norms for what constituted beauty. And in particular, there was a shift toward a more consumption-based form, form of beauty. So uh, Shadrach Marlow, writing in the 1950s, noted, Today's Luo man looks for different things in a woman. He looks for the following. Is she brown or light-skinned? Does she look good in powder? You know, is she all made up and dressed up? Is her neck long? Is she slender and looks good in clothes? Is her teeth white? So to be a beautiful Luo girl, you now need a toothpaste, skin lightening creams, makeup, fashionable clothing, in addition to all the ideals like a long neck. And that, you know, you're either born with it or, or you're not. But all these products have to be purchased. 